عرفنا عن صورة لنقص السهو نريد نحاول هنا نكمل الصلوات في الليلة الثانية <تصفيق> السهو نكمله هذا الليلة نحاول نكمل السهو إذا أمكننا نزيد عليه نفعه يقول لهم أنهم يتركوا الأسئلة نعم so to, um, <coughs> just to begin we got only two more classes uh, of this Ibn Ashr for this uh, semester because then after that next week inshallah will be Ramadan and so they're going to be praying Tarawih so there's not really room to have the classes so we just have tonight and tomorrow night so we're going to try to finish up the, this chapter of Salah from Ibn Ashr and then during that um, uh, during the, until the next semester starts people can just review it amongst themselves get the little halaqas going and so just to try to get through it, it's, it's a hard chapter, a hard section, the rules of forgetfulness. So what we'll try to do is get through it as quick as possible just so we can finish this tonight and, and on Thursday night. So all questions, we'll leave them to the end, inshallah. So no questions until the end of the class. And if you have a question, just write it down. فَصْلُونِ نَقْسِ سُنَّةٍ سَهْوًا يُسَنْ قَبْلَ السَّلَامِ سَجْدَتَانِ أَوْ سُنَنْ نعم, هذا الكلام على السهو. السهو ترغت في المذاهب على ثلاثة أقوال. الإمام الشافعي يرى القبل الإمام مالك يرى القبلية والبعدية معا يرى النقص فيه القبل ويرى الزيادة فيه البعد الإمام الشافعي لا يرى إلا القبلية والإمام أبو حنيفة لا يرى إلا البعدي الإمام مالك توسط بين القبل الراع الخلاف أحيانا ينظر إلى القبل إذا وجدنا نقصا وينظر إلى البعد إذا وجدنا زيادة لنقص سنة سهوا سنة مؤكدة لا سنة خفيفة على ما سيأتي السنن المؤكدات يجمعها قوله سننها المؤكدات ما رمز له قديما بارتجاز المرتجس سينان شينان كذا جمان تاان عد السنن الثماني نقص السنة من السنن المؤكدات اللي هي سينان السر والسورة سينان شينان التشهدان كذا جمان الجهر والجلوس الوسطى تاان التشهد والتكبير والتحميد عد السنن الثماني إذا نقص السنة مؤكدة أو سنتين أو جميع السنن يسجد القبلية والسلام على سيدتان أو سنن إن أكدت. So this is the section on the rules of the prostration of forgetfulness. He said that there's three opinions amongst the scholars, amongst the three madhabs, on whether a person prostrates if they make a mistake in the prayer, whether they prostrate before the salam or after the salam. According to Imam Malik, sometimes you prostrate before the salam and sometimes you prostrate afterwards. And the difference is in, in um, uh, different proofs where the, what the Prophet ﷺ did. Sometimes he prostrated before the salam and sometimes he prostrated after the salam. So Imam al-Shafi'i, he, uh, for any mistakes in the prayer, whether it's addition or subtraction, there's a, uh, there's a uh, prostration before the salam. And Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu prostrates, uh, says that you prostrate after the salam. salam. And Imam Malik joined between the two um, seemingly contradicting um, uh, uh, situations by saying that if you subtract something from the prayer, you prostrate before the salam. And if you add something to the prayer, you prostrate after the salam. <coughs> um, so for omitting two light sunnah or a confirmed sunnah due to forgetfulness. And this is not subtraction. So he begins by talking about the prostrations, the two prostrations before the salam. It's for subtracting something from the prayer, but it's not for subtracting anything. It's only for specific things. Uh, subtracting um, uh, two uh, light sunnah or a confirmed sunnah due to forgetfulness. It is sunnah before one says final salam to make two extra prostrations. And those, <clears throat> those um, are eight sunnahs. And they're all on actually on the in the page of the prayer, um, on page thirty-six, twenty-six. On page twenty-six, the first one, two, three, four, the first four lines of that of page twenty-six. Those are the eight sunnas. <clears throat> so it's the two scenes, the the surah, the recitation of the surah after the Fatiha. The sir, the, the silent recitation, reciting silently in the daytime, so if somebody leaves that, they've now left the sunnah. Um, the the tashahud, the two, tash uh, the two tashahuds, and the, the jahar, the audible, the audible recitation, and the sitting. And then the um, saying, Sami Allahu liman hamida, and the... Um, and the takbir, saying Allahu Akbar in between all the things. 
So these are all mentioned in the first four lines there of um, page 26. And so those, those sunnas, if it's like a takbir or a tasmi' you have to uh, miss two to prostrate. So if a person misses two takbirs or two sami' Allahu liman hamidahs, they prostrate. But if they only do one, that's considered a light sunnah, so you would not prostrate for missing one light sunnah. The confirmed sunnahs are the, the, the surah and the tashahud. So if a person misses two light sunnahs or a confirmed sunnah, then he would prostrate the, the qabli, two prostrations before the salam. <clears throat> إن أكدت ومن يزيد سهوا سجد بعد كذا والنقص غلب ورد يا زاد شيئا من فرائض الصلاة أو شيئا زائدا عليها من غيرها لا من سننها هذا يسجد البعد بأن زاد ركوع عن السجود الناسي أو تكلم ناسيا خارج الصلاة أما من زاد سنة منها فهذا لا يسجد شيئا كما زاد سورة وكما زاد تشهدا ثانيا من غير جلوس هذا لا يسجد شيئا if someone forgetfully adds a word or deed to the prayer he should prostrate after the salam in the same manner and it, sh- and, and it shares the rulings of sunnah. Should he do both, then omission overrides the addition. <clears throat> so we said if you, pr- if you subtract something, you prostrate two prostrations before the salam. If you add something and it's a pillar of the prayer, like an extra prostration or an extra bowing, you do two prostrations after the salam. And a word or deed, if they accidentally speak in the prayer, so that's... Um, uh, unintentional addition to the prayer, then you would prostrate twice after the salam. And if he does both, if you subtract something and you add something, then the subtraction overrides the addition. So say a person forgot the surah and he spoke accidentally or he added an extra prostration. So he added and he subtracted. The, the subtraction overrides the addition and he would only do the two prostrations before the salam, the qabli. مستدرك القبلي معقول. مستدرك القبلي معقول بالسلام مستدرك البعدية ولو ولو من بعد عام. إذا فات على الإنسان القبلي ونا حكمه أن يأتي به قبل السلام فإذا نسي وسلم قبل أن يأتي بالقبلي هل يستدركه إذا لم يحصل طول بأن لم يخرج من المسجد أو لم يسلم وحصل طول بأن كان انتهى من المعاقبات وبعد ذلك صار وقت طويل. He should redress omission, meaning the 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 qabli, the two prostrations before the salam. Even if he forgets to prostrate before the salam, if little time has transpired after the salam. So say a person does something that requires a qabli. They subtracted the surah, so now they have to prostrate two salams. But they forget to prostrate it, and they say, As-salamu alaykum. So now, if a, if a long time has not passed, meaning the, the, they haven't finished from the dhikr that they do right after their prayer, or they have not left the masjid, so uh, only a short time has passed, then they go ahead and prostrate two prostrations. So even though it was a qabli, it was supposed to be two prostrations before the salam, he's now doing it two prostrations after the salam, just as long as a long time has not passed. <clears throat> If much time has passed, then one should not prostrate. So if a long time has passed, then the then then he doesn't then he doesn't have to prostrate. Then he can he can't prostrate. It's he's lost the chance to prostrate that qabli. And then if it's a ba'di that if a person forgot to prostrate, like the two prostrations after the salam. <clears throat> if a person forgot to prostrate it, then they prostrate it even if a year has passed or 10 years, a long time. So as soon as a person remembers that a year ago, say for example, they added an extra prostration or something to the prayer, even though now a long time has passed, the ba'di has no time limit to it. So you prostrate um, two prostrations and consider it to be um, to, f- to fix that mistake. نعم مقتد يحمل هذين الإمام وبطلت بعمد نفخ وكلام. نعم موجب القبلي والبعد يحمله الإمام عن المقتدي فالمقتدي يحمل عنه الإمام كل شيء غير الفرائض أما الفرائض فلا يحملها عنه بطلت بعمد نفخ إذا نفخ في الصلاة قال أوف سواء حصل من ذلك حرف كأوف بالفاء أو حصل صوت فقط من غير حرف ها تبطل الصلاة به نفخ أو كلام أو كلام مثلا كذلك لغير إصلاح تكلم في الصلاة عامدا بطل الصلاة إلا إذا كان لإصلاح على الإمام إن كان الإمام قام عن ركعة ولم يفهم إلا بالكلام هذا يكون رخص في ذلك كما في حديث ذي اليدين أقصرت الصلاة ومن السيت يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
The prayer of the imam bears the mistakes of the followers, omission or addition. So when we're talking about prostrating before the salam or after the salam for addition or subtraction, that's if you're the imam or if you're praying by yourself. Whereas if you're praying behind the imam, then if you add something or you subtract a sunnah from the prayer, then you don't, then you don't prostrate anything. The fact that you're praying behind the imam, he carries that. And he himself does not have to prostrate for your mistake. The, so the imam bears everything <clears throat> of the, uh, all the mistakes of the follower except for the missing an obligation. So if a follower didn't prostrate twice or he didn't do rukur, he can't say, well, I'm praying behind the imam. He, takes care, he, he, um, he bears my mistakes. He bears your mistakes if it was a sunnah or if it was an addition. But if it was a subtraction of an obligation, then he does not bear it. You have to address that as a follower. The prayer is invalidated by willful blowing or intentional speech. So if a person intentionally speaks in the prayer or intentionally blows in the prayer, like there's something and he just goes, like blows, blows air, or, or, and, and whether, whether or not a letter is pronounced. Like if he says, oof, there's a fa pronounced. So it's as if he spoke. Or if he just made a sound with his mouth, uh, if he did it intentionally, it breaks the prayer. And the same goes for speech. If, a, if it was intentional speech, then it breaks the prayer. If it was unintentional, then he prostrates uh, ba'di. If he unintentionally blows air or speaks, then he prostrates two prostrations after the salam for this addition. <clears throat> unless the speech was to rectify the imam's mistake, unless a person was praying behind the imam and the imam made a mistake <clears throat> and you said subhanallah or you motioned to him and he did not understand by motioning or by, or by tasbih, by saying subhanallah, so then you say something. You tell him something to, f to fix his prayer. And this is uh, what happened in the, in the, the case where the Prophet ﷺ uh, said salams before he finished the prayer. So one of the Sahaba, Dhul uh, Yadain radiallahu anhu, said, asked the Prophet ﷺ, did you shorten the prayer or did you, make it, or did you forget? And so he was still in the prayer, so it was, it's a proof that, that if he's still in the prayer, he can make um, a correction of the imam. وَبِالْمُشْغِلِ عَنْ فَرْضٍ وَفِي الْوَقْتِ عَائِدٍ إِذَا يُسَنْ نعم بطلت الصلاة بالمشغل عن الفرض كمن زاحم الخبث مثلا حتى منعه ذلك من الركوع أو السجود أو قراءة الفاتحة تبطل الصلاة أما إذا شغله عن سنة كعن قراءة السورة أو عن تكبيرة غير الإحرام فلا تبطل الصلاة ولكن من دوب له أن يعيدها also, it is invalidated, meaning the prayer is invalidated, by anything that preoccupies the worshiper from fulfilling an obligatory act. If it, if it diverted him from, from one confirmed sunnah, it is recommended that he repeat the prayer if time allows. So if somebody's doing something in the prayer that preoccupies them from pre, um, performing an obligation, and an example of that would be if a person's holding back um, the urge, <clears throat> he's holding back urine or wind, and he, he, he's, he's, um, he's preoccupied with, with holding that back, and so he doesn't fulfill an obligation. He, he, uh, he cuts the fatiha short and goes into ruku' or doesn't do a proper ruku'. So now he's doing something that preoccupied him from fulfilling an obligation, so that invalidates his prayer. Now if doing that thing preoccupied him from fulfilling a sunnah, then it's merely recommended for him to pray that time. So say he read fatiha and he doesn't take time to read surah, he just goes immediately into ruku' because he's, um, he's holding back um, the urge to, uh, to, to urinate or to, um, to pass wind, then his prayer is correct, but because he left the sunnah and he did it intentionally, he should repeat, this, uh, he should repeat the prayer if there's still time. وَحَدَثٍ وَسَهُوَ الزَّيْدِ الْمِثْلِ قَحْقَهَةٍ وَعَمْدِ شُرْبٍ أَكْلِي كَذَلِكَ مَنْ حَدَثَ فِي أَنَاءِ الصَّلَاةِ بَطَلَةِ الصَّلَاةِ فَيَبْدَهُ وَضُوءًا شَدِيدًا وَسَهُوِ زَيْدِ الْمِثْلِ السَّهُوِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ بِزِيَادَةِ إلا إذا بلغت الزيادة شيء متفاحش بين بلغت قدر الصلاة زاد على الصبح ركعتين وزاد على الرباعية أربعا أو زاد على الجمعة اثنتين تبطل الصلاة لأنها زيادة صارت كثيرة قهقهة كذلك من قهقها في الصلاة أي الضحك بصوت سواء كان ذلك عمدا أو نسيانا أو غالبة تبطل الصلاة وعمد شرب في كذلك من تعمد في الصلاة في الشرب أو أكل ولو قليلا تبطل صلاته Prayer is also invalidated by the loss of wudu and unintentional adding to the prayer what amounts to double its prescription, laughing aloud and eating or drinking intentionally. So if a person does something or breaks their wudu in the midst of the prayer, then their prayer is invalid. Unintentional adding to the prayer what amounts to double its pres prescription. If a person adds one rak'ah to the prayer or say two rak'ah to the prayer in the case of dhuhr, because that's an unintentional addition, all he has to do is prostrate twice after the salam, because this is an unintentional addition. But if he keeps adding 
unintentionally, and now the amount that he's added equals, uh, equals the amount of the prayer, then his prayer is invalid, even though he did it unintentionally. So say in Dhuhr, he just keeps adding, not realizing, and then he, and then he realizes, oh, I just prayed eight rak'ahs. So now he's doubled the amount of Dhuhr, so his prayer is invalid. Or two in the case of Subh, for example. <clears throat> Laughing aloud and eating or drinking intentionally. If a person laughs out loud, and that all that means is that they laugh with a sound, even if it's a slight sound, that's considered laughing out loud, qahqaha, and it invalidates the prayer. Uh, absolutely. Whether it was intentional, unintentional, or the person, it just overcame the person. And eating or drinking intentionally, also if a person eats something in the prayer or drinks in the prayer intentionally, that breaks the prayer. If they do it unintentionally, they accidentally eat or drink. If it was just they accidentally ate something or accidentally drank something, then the prayer is not invalid. But if they accidentally eat something and drink something, meaning do both, then the prayer is invalid. And what usually happens is a person, if, if they got like food stuck in between their teeth, so if they get it out and they, and they chew it and then they swallow it, that would be considered eating. But if they just merely, it comes out from between their teeth like with the use of the tongue and they swallow it without, uh, without chewing, then it's not considered eating. Sajdatin qay'un wa dhikri fardi aqal min sit ka dhikri ul-ba'di. Kalaalika man sajda fi salati aamidan ziyada. أو ركع المهم زاد فرضا من الصلاة فيها غير الفاتحة أما زيادة الفاتحة فالمشهور كراهة ولا تبطل الصلاة أقل من ست كذلك ذكر بعض كذلك من تذكر ذكر الفرض كذلك من تذكر الفرض يعني فوائد من الصلاة أقل من ست يعني أقل من ست خمسا أو أربعا على خلاف في ذلك فهذا قاله وتبطل صلاته ولكن المشهور أنه لا تبطل صلاته ويجب عليه القطع من غير بطلان كذكر البعض كذلك ما تذكر البعض في أثناء الصلاة كذا بعض هذه الصلاة فإذا كان ركع خلاص مثلا صار حكمه حكم الفائتة بعض مبطل يعني قبل ناشع عن السنن أو ركوع أو السجود من هذه الصلاة الماضية إذا كان شرع في هذه الصلاة بعدها إذا كان قبل الركوع بعد انتهاء الفاتحة وركع من لا يقرأه بعد انتهاء الفاتحة وركع من لا يقرأه خلاص انتهت تلك الفريضة الأولى وبطلت فحيثنا إذا نبحث عن هذه هو قال أن الصلاة باطلة وأنه يرجع لتلك ولكن مشهور أنها لا تبطل ويجب عليه القطع فقط لأجل أن يقدم الأولى Intentionally adding a prostration that is not prescribed also invalidates a prayer so if a person just says out of uh, he thinks that he's doing something good على تفصيل في ذلك يطلب في المطولات معناها ذكر لهم أنه قال ذكر البعض فقط إنك يحتاج إلى تفصيل المطولات كثيرة if a person um, intentionally adds, like say he, he does two prostrations and then he says, I'm going to do a, a, a third one. So he does a third prostration, that invalidates the prayer. As does adding any um, pillar to the prayer intentionally. So he does two bowings or he does five rak'ahs instead of four for dhuhr. If you a intentionally add an obligation to the prayer, it invalidates the prayer. Swallowing is one vomit. If a person actually regurgitates some food in the, in the prayer, or even just like some of the, um, um, sometimes if a person e e e becomes satiated, they might burp up and, it com and food comes out. So that food that comes out, if a person were to re-swallow it, it invalidates the prayer. Whereas if, if, they, if they just spit it out, if they're not in the masjid, they can just spit it out or spit it into a napkin, their prayer would be fine as long as it has not changed. If the vomit has now changed, then it's considered impure, najasa, and that invalidates the prayer by it being in the mouth. Remembering that less, <coughs> remembering, <coughs> me, remembering that less than six previous obligatory prayers are owed. If a person's in the prayer and he realizes that he owes six prayers, less than six means this, which means uh, five, and there's opinion that that it's four. So if a person's in prayer and then realizes, oh, he, I didn't make up prayers from yesterday, five prayers. He did for whatever reason he over he slept all day and he didn't pray all five prayers. So he he's in the midst of this prayer now, Dhuhr, and he says, oh, yesterday I didn't pray any prayers. So that's five prayers. At that point, uh, he's saying here that the prayer becomes invalid, um, and, he, and, um, and he has to go make up those prayers. The dominant opinion, though, is that if he continues on in this prayer, the prayer is correct, but it's, it's, it was a, it's an obligation for him to cut the prayer off. So if a person remembers that they have to make up five or less prayers, they have to cut the prayer off and go make up those before they pray this present prayer. But if they don't do it, the prayer is correct, in contrast to what he's saying here. Now, if a person owes more than five prayers, then they don't have to cut it off to make up those prayers. So if a person owes 
10 prayers or a year of prayers, they make this up, they pray this prayer, and then they work on making those up. Or remembering having omitted a necessary part of a previous obligatory prayer. So this is in the case of, of certain prayers, like if a person say an Asr prayer, and he remembers that he did not complete Dhuhr prayer. Like he prayed Dhuhr, and then it was only three rakahs. He forgot one whole rakah, or he forgot a prostration. So now he's for, he remembered that he forgot a part of a previous obligatory prayer, uh, Dhuhr, and now he's in Asr. So now this Asr becomes invalid. وفوتي قبليا ثلاث ثلاث سنن بفصل مسجد كطول الزمن بطلت الصلاة إذا كان الإنسان ترك قبليا ناشئا عن ثلاث سنن كجلسة الوسطى أو السورة على خلاف مشهور في السورة أنها لا تبطل لا تبطل الصلاة على ما شهره شراح الرسالة بعض بعض من الفقهاء وتقبل ثلاث سنن كجلسة الوسطى أو ثلاث تكبيرات أو سورتين بفصل مسجد إذا انفصل عن المسجد أو طال الزمان فتبطل الصلاة ويعودها من أصلها ما إذا كان عن سنتين عن سنة واحدة كسر في محل الجهر من سر في محل الجهر فهذا يعني ما يعيده والصلاة صحيحة إذا حصل الطول so prayer is also invalidated by remembering that a prostration of a mission was not done to redress a prayer for three or more sunan omitted but if only if if but only if one has already left the masjid or a long time has elapsed. So we're talking about if a person um, forgot to do a qabli, if a long time is not passed, they can pray that, uh, they can prostrate the qabli after the salam. If a long time has passed, they don't have the right to prostrate the qabli. So now he just has to look at the prayer. If, if he owed the qabli because of missing three sunnas, like three light sunnas or one confirmed sunnas that, that, that was comprised of three sunnas, so the important thing was that it was three or more sunnas, then his prayer is invalid by not prostrating that qabli. If it was only two, then his prayer is still valid. So if a person forgot to, forgot to recite a surah, for example, the surah has three sunnahs. So if a long time passed, and now he remembered, oh, I, I forgot to recite a surah, and I did not prostrate before the salam. So now a long time has passed, he can't prostrate the qabli, so his prayer is invalid. He has to repeat it. Three sunnahs. So if, he, if, if, it was, if it was only one sunnah, like one takbir, or one sami'allahu liman hamidah, then he sh- uh, or uh, if it was, say, two sami'allahu liman hamidahs, or two Allahu akbars, then that's two sunnahs. He should prostrate the qabli, but if he does not prostrate the qabli and a long time passes, then his prayer is correct. But if it was three or more sunnahs, then his prayer is invalid. Uh, the surah that has three sunnahs because recitation of the surah is a sunnah. Reciting it out loud is a sunnah and reciting it while standing is a sunnah. وَاسْتَدْرِكِ الرُّكْنَ فَإِنْ حَالَ فَإِنْ حَالَ فَإِنْ حَالَ رُكُوعٍ فَأَلْغِ ذَاكَ السَّهْوِ وَالْبِنَاءِ يَطُوعَ كَفِعْلِ مَنْ سَلَّمَ لَكِنْ يُحْرِمُ لِلْبَاقِ وَالطُّولُ الْفَسَادَ مُلْزِمُ وَاسْتَدْرِكِ الرُّكْنَ يَا أَخِي استدرك الركن وجوبا حيث مثلا تركت ركنا فاستدركه إذا لم يحل بينك وبينه ركوع من الركعة التي بعدها التي بعد المتروك منها الركن ترك ركوعا وسجودا وما تذكره إلا بعد الركوع خلاص انتهى هذا الركن فالغي ذات السهوي فالغي ذات السهوي والبناء يطع البناء هو أن نجعل هذه الركعة التي منعت من استدراك من تدارك الركن من تدارك الركن في هذه الركعة التي قبلها نجعلها محلها لأن كل ركعة بطلت تتنزل ما بعدها منزلتها بنا يطع والاستدراك هو أن تتي بالركن قبل فواته العود للركن إذا ما التاركوا لم يعقدوا يسلم التدارك وركعة النقص إذا يجاء بركعة تخلفها البناء كفعل من سلم كذلك من سلم ناسيا لفرض ركوع أو سجود يأتي بركعة نيابة عن الفرض المتروك لكن يحرم لكن هنا يحرم من جلسه الله أكبر إحراما من الجلس وأقوم يأتي بركعة للباقي والطول الفساد المسلم إذا تذكر بعد طول بطلت الصلاة وهنا يأتي سجود 
أحيانا يأتي السجود القبلي وأحيانا يأتي السجود البعد على ما سيأتي Redress a pillar or rukun if omitted unless the next bowing of the following ruku' came between it. In that case, the previous rak'ah in which something was forgotten and the remainder of the prayer follows what was already completed. <clears throat> so if a person's in the prayer and, and you forgot something from, a, uh, from one of the ruku' like you're in, uh, you're in Maghrib and first in the first rak'ah you forget to do the ruku' and you, so you just go from the standing position straight into the bowing position. Now you forgot a pillar of the prayer. Now you're standing in the second rak'ah. Now that you're standing in the second rak'ah, you should um, you you should go ahead and do that rak'ah again, and then just and just start from from that point on. Come up from the rak'ah and go into the prostration. So you go back to the pillar that you missed, and then pick up from there. Unless uh, a rak'ah came in between the two, uh, the, the, the mis- you and the mistake. So if you made a mistake, you left an obligation from rak'ah number one, and now you're standing in rak'ah number two, and you go into rak'ah. You, you don't have the chance to make up that previous obligation. So now just consider that first uh, rak'ah, rak'ah number one, considered uh, omitted, and then you're going to add one at the end of the prayer, and you're going to prostrate two um, prostrations after the salam because of an addition. Right, and then you're just going to do, you're going to do now rak'ah number two, you consider it that it's now rak'ah number one. So you're going to recite a, recite a fatiha and a surah and so forth. So you're just going to consider it like the rak'ah that was missed, that you made a mistake. So that's what it means. Redress a pillar, meaning make up a pillar, do it, uh, uh, go back, fix it, and then pick up where, where from that point, unless the next bowing of the following rak'ah came in between it. So if now you have a, a rak'ah, you have a bowing between you and between the mistake, now just omit that first rak'ah where you made the mistake and then continue on the prayer. In that case, void the previous rak'ah in which something was forgotten and the remainder of the f- prayer follows what was already completed. Is that clear? كَفِعْلِ مَنْ سَلَّمَ لَكَنْ يُحْرِمُونِ الْبَاقِي وَالطُّلُولِ فَسَادَ يُمُلْزِمُ هَيَقُنَا مَنْ سَلَّمَ هَذَا مَثَلًا كَذَلِكَ صَارَ مَا عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا الْبِنَا فَيَتِي بَرَكَاتٍ وَلَكِنَّهُمْ هُنَا يَتِي بَرَكَاتٍ مَعَ إِحْرَامٍ مثلا من بنى قبل السلام ما في احرام ياتي بركات فقد خاليه من الاحرام ومن ياتي باحرام من الجلوس فيقوم ياتي بركات دانيا يعني يا الركعه الاخيره هنا تكون بالفاتحه فقط وسيتبين لنا الحال الذي يكون في القبل والبعد ان شاء الله as for one who who is in his last rak'ah and he needs to redress a pillar and says the final salam he must repeat the takbir of sanctification for whatever remains of the prayer and know that a long interval necessarily uh, invalidates the prayer. So if a person forgot, um, say he, he already said assalamu alaikum, and now he realized that he made a mistake in one of his pillars of his prayer. He, from the seated position, he says Allahu Akbar to go back into the prayer, and then he does another, he does another rak'ah. Like say he's in dhuhr, he says assalamu alaikum, and then he realizes from rak'ah number one, he forgot a sajda, or he forgot to read fatiha. So now he says Allahu Akbar to go back into the prayer, stands up, completes a whole other rak'ah, and, but without a surah, because now he's just like, it's as if he's adding something onto the end. And then he's going to say, Assalamu alaikum, and he's going to uh, prostrate after the salam. And know that a long interval necessarily invalidates the prayer. So if a person said, Assalamu alaikum, a long time passed, or he left the masjid, and he remembered that he left an obligation from the prayer, then that prayer is invalid. So he can go back into the prayer and fix the mistake as long as a long time has not passed. Once a long time passes, now his pray- that prayer is invalid. He has to repeat it. من شك في ركن بناء على اليقين واليشدد البعدية لكن قد يبين. من شك في ركن بناء على اليقين. سأن شك في ركن. ما أعرف الأتاب الركوع أو هذا السجود ما أعرف الأتاب هم لا يبني على اليقين إذا لم يكن موسوسا يأتي بهذا الركن فإذا كان موسوسا تركه وجوبا ولا يعبأ بذلك يقين واليشدد البعدية. يسجد البعد هنا للشك في الزيادة لأنه أتى بهذا الركن عن شك فحين يشك في الزيادة لكن قد يبين لأن بنوا في فعلهم والقول نقص بفوت سورة في الغرب لكنه قد يتبين إذا بنى الإنسان وكان ذلك البناء ناشيا عن نسيان لركن قد, قد, قد يتبين هناك بناء في الأفعال والأقوال فيتبين من ذلك نقص مع زيادة فيلزم من ذلك القبل لأن النقص والزيادة إذا اجتمعا قدم النقص فيسجد القبل 
ذلك مثاله من ترك من بطلت عليه الركعة الثانية وما تذكر إلا بعد أن عقد الركوع في الركعة الثالثة فصارت الركعة الثالثة هنا تتنزل منزلة الثانية وصار يجلس هنا جلوس التشهد صارت الركعة الثانية هنا قرأت في الفاتحة فقط فحين سيأتي بركعتين أخيرتين كلاهما بالفاتحة فقط فهي سجد القبل لأن اجتمعت زيادة والنقصة أما إذا تذكر بطلان الركعة الأولى بعد قبل أن يعقد الركوع في الثانية قبل أن يعقد الركوع الثالثة قبل أن يعقد الركوع الثالثة فإذا صارت الثانية تتنزل منزلة الأولى صارت الثالثة سيقرأ فيها الفاتحة والسورة وتم حاضة الزيادة بحين يسد البعد بعد فقط If one doubts, if one has doubts concerning a pillar, he should base the remainder of the prayer on that which he is certain to come. And then prostrate for an addition. So if a person, we're talking about like um, making mistakes in the prayer, if you're sure you made the mistake, then treat it, uh, then, then it's, the matter is clear. But say a person has doubt about the mistake. They don't know. Did I pray three rakahs or did I pray four rakahs? Did I prostrate once or did I prostrate twice? You build upon certainty. So the person in that case, the case, he's certain that he prayed three rak'ahs, but he has doubt about the fourth. So you consider that you've only prayed three and then add another rak'ah. Or in the case of the prostrations, you're certain that you prostrated once, you have doubt about the second one. So build upon certainty, add another one. So you, you, um, you build upon certainty. Unless a person is muwaswas, like if a person has um, muwaswas, they have um, constant doubts, Every single day they have doubts about their prayer. That person leaves doubt and just, um, um, just goes on. Um, like if he has doubt that I pray three or four, consider that he prayed four. Because it's most probably from the, the shaitan and he most probably did in fact pray four. But he's just having these constant doubts. So if a person is just getting doubts once in a while, they follow up their doubt and they build upon certainty. And if a person has whisperings, they just leave the, leave the doubt and build. They go to the, to the largest um, To, like in, in the case of three rakahs or four, they consider it four. So if one has doubts concerning a pillar, he should base the remainder of the prayer on that which he is certain to bow and then prostrate for an addition. But in that case, if a person has doubt, like say he doesn't know that I pray three rakahs or four, he considers it three, adds a fourth one, and then he, um, um, and then he, uh, after he adds a fourth one, he's going to prostrate twice after the salam because of the possibility of, a, of an addition. Because he might have in fact prayed four, And now he's adding another one, so it's five. So because of the possibility of an addition, he adds two prostrations after the salam. If it becomes apparent to him that in building on what he has done and said that he has omitted the recitation of a chapter after the Fatiha, then he should prostrate one of omission because addition and omission have been joined. And the rule is that omission overrides addition. So this is another case. If a person, we were talking about earlier, if, um, if a person made a mistake in one of the rak'ahs, And then a bowing came between him and the mistake. Then he cancels out that rak'ah. And then he completes the prayer. And he prostrates twice after the salam. Now he prostrates the twice after the salam, two rak'ahs after the salam because of this addition. Unless it becomes clear that by doing that, adding another rak'ah to the prayer, he's now subtracted something. So that example is like a person's praying. praying and in rak'ah number one, He forgets to, he, he, um, he makes a mistake. He doesn't do sajda or whatever. He doesn't realize it until rak'ah number three or four. So now he, can, he doesn't have the right to go back to rak'ah number one because a, 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 um, a bowing has come in between him and the mistake. So he cancels out rak'ah number one and now he adds something to, um, to the end of the prayer. So now if you look at his prayer, he's prayed five rak'ahs. At the first rak'ah, we canceled it out. The second rak'ah has a fatiha and a surah. But now the third rak'ah, which is now the second rak'ah, only has a fatiha. It doesn't have a surah. So now because he's added something, he's added a rak'ah, and he's subtracted something, meaning the surah, the subtraction overrides the addition, and he prostrates a qabli. And then he mentioned after explaining that, he said, um, you have to have uh, engineering. The prayer requires a little bit of engineering, building and subtracting. And So is that one clear? For the, people that, for the people that the first time that you heard, heard this, um, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit like... Um, uh, Uh, l a little bit too much and the first time that I went through it I, um, I didn't re understand it but you have to just keep going through uh, over it it's just, it's just like school mathematics any type of mathematics or algebra or any subject that's hard for a person you just keep going it over, over and over and then, and then it'll pretty much it'll become clear it'll, be like, uh, it'll get to the point like you're drinking water it'll be as easy as drinking water and then it also what it does 
uh, was very beneficial about this, about the rules of prostration and forgetfulness. It teaches you how to like really seriously think, like critical thinking. So it's like mental exercises, which will help you in other aspects of your life as well. Being able to um, break down things and, and analyze them where, where what should be. كذاكر الوسطى الأيدي قد رفع والأيدي قد رفع وركبا لا قبل ذلك رجع والأيدي قد رفع وركبا لا غير لا قبل ذلك رجع نعم كذلك من تذكر الوسطى وقد رفع يديه وركبتيه عن الأرض فهذا لا يرجع ويسجد القبلي لا قبل لا لا إذا كان في, في الأرض أحد ركب أحد ركبتيه إحدى ركبتيه أو يديه هذا يرجع ولا شيء عليه في هذا التزحزح. The same applies to one who remembers that he um, did not sit for the middle sitting, but has already raised his hands and knees off the ground. However, if he remembers before leaving the ground with e- with either both hands or both knees, then he returns to the sitting position and nothing is owed. So if a person gets up uh, in the after two after two rak'ahs they're supposed to do a sitting and read the tashahud but say they accidentally get up if they've got if they started to get up and both their hands and both their knees have now left the ground then they continue on in their prayer they should not sit back down and do the tashahud they continue on in their prayer and then they're going at the end of the prostr- prayer they prostrate twice because they've now subtracted um, uh, the sunnah uh, the sunnah of sitting and the reciting of the tashahud but if a person gets up and say his hands are still on the ground, or his knees are, but his hands have left, or one hand is still on the ground, or one knee is on, still on the ground, then he sits back down. In, in a case where a person, sometimes a person gets up and they're start trying to think, am I in my first rakah or second rakah? And they kind of go up and then go back down and then go up and go back down. And then they realize, oh, I have to sit, or they realize, oh, I have to stand. In that movement of going back up and down, as long as it was not a lot, there's no, there's nothing um, owed for that. But the so the point is, if a person, if their hands, both hands and both knees have left the ground, continue on in that standing motion, stand up and complete the prayer, prostrate twice before the salam because of subtraction. And if the hands or knees have not left the ground, sit back down, do the tashahud, and nothing is owed. الجمعة والإمام سهل مثلا ويكون عندنا ساعة تامة ساعة كم السبعة ونص ثامن ونص تقريبا إيه إن شاء الله so إن شاء الله sure right. when we talk about doubt the doubt means is that it's 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 like reasonable doubt like like 50 50 if it's if it's if you're not sure but you're almost like it's 75 or 80 then that's considered like one and you treat it like yaqeen but if it's if it's just if it's re- if it's doubt like 50 50 and it's reasonable it's not like it's it's not like irrational cuz that's like whisperings that's what's what's up but if it's reasonable doubt 50 50 that's considered uh doubt mhm They're all confirmed in the, uh, but um, the, you just get a little bit of the way they term, term them. They're confirmed sunnas, but each one is um, in the in the in the, tr- uh, the prostration of forgetfulness. You consider each one like a light sunnah. So if there's three three of them together, three light sunnas together make up a confirmed sunnah. Okay. Like for example, the the recitation of the surah, standing for it and reciting it out loud or silently, those are three sunnas. Now they make up. It's considered a confirmed sunnah because it's almost like a. Like a like a compounded sunnah now. If it's just one tis semi Allahu Limin Hamida or one Allahu Akbar, that's just considered one or two light sunnahs. Are these groups mixed? Which are the light sunnahs? Are each of them like okay, let's say you forget to recite the surah after the first rakah. Right. Right. Well that one that one if you if you forget to recite the surah, you've now just automatically assumed that you've recited you've 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 missed three sunnahs. No, if you if you didn't recite the tashahud, um, then you've then you've missed three sunnahs, and so you have to prostrate. Because what it means when it says sitting for the tashahud, it actually means sitting during the recitation. 
So if you just sit and you don't recite, you haven't even fulfilled that sunnah. So it's kind of, it's almost like a, a condition, uh, like the sunnah, it's contingent upon the actual recitation. Okay, so which of these five in the parallel the right The um, saying Allahu Akbar in between the actions mm-hmm. and the saying Sami Allahu Liman Hamidah. Pretty, yeah, they're just those two. Because the other sunnahs are related to the surah and they're related to the to the tashahud. If they if they if they're leaving it because if a person the question was asked if a person is a new Muslim and they're leaving the tashahud if they're leaving it they're leaving it intentionally most probably right because they don't they don't know it. So when we're talking about leaving something here, it's all talking about forgetfulness. If a person intentionally leaves something, that's something different. Like if you intentionally leave the surah after the fatiha, you don't prostrate at all. There's no prostration. It's only if you forget to read it. Or if a person forgets to read the shahud. Whereas if they intentionally say, I'm not reading the shahud, that's not considered sahu. That's considered intentional recitation. And that either invalidates the prayer or does not invalidate it. There's uh, opinions on both sides. The dominant opinion is that it does not invalidate the prayer. The other question is: A fly flies in front of you, and you and um, and you in you intentionally blow the fly from your face. Does this take you out? What is the three sunnah of the surah? So, if a person, if a fly comes to them in the prayer and they go like that intentionally, they know what they're doing. Then that invalidates the prayer because they've intentionally blow it in the prayer. If they do unintentionally, like they, it's just a habit. Like the fly comes and they and they just without thinking. They, they say they blow at the fly to get it out of their face or something. That's, they just do two prostrations after the salam. If you move the hand, the movement of the hand does not, um, uh, does not invalidate the prayer. As long as motions with the hand or moving with your head or moving your feet a little bit, as long as if a person were to look at you, they would think that you're still in the prayer, that's not too much motion. No. If the imam's reciting and you accidentally recite the surah with the imam, that doesn't invalidate the prayer because this is talking about speaking with something that's not part of the prayer. So if a person, or that's not a dhikr, if a person is doing something like say in ruku'ah, he sa- or he's just standing after fatiha, he says, La ilaha illallah. So he's reciting, normally you don't say it in that particular place, but this is not considered like accidentally speaking. This is a, like a child does something, you say, hey, come here. You know, something totally foreign of the prayer. Okay, if you want after pr- after the prayer, inshallah, if anybody wants, uh, the, the Sheikh Sadiq will go, will go up and I'll, and I'll stick around if people have questions about Seho. Yes. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.